I've come to Oakwell Stadium, home of Barnsley Football Club and twice FA Cup finalists and winners in 1912. We'll hear more about that shortly. This is the club that produced Tommy Taylor, the legendary England striker who achieved fame at Manchester United and sadly died in 1958 in the Munich air disaster. Others who made their mark include Mick McCarthy with over 300 appearances up to his departure in 1983. He went on to manage the Republic of Ireland. Barry Murphy holds the club record of 567 appearances during the 1960s and 70s. The ground here was acquired for the club by an unlikely young man who was also its founder. Let's find out more about him and how Barnsley Football Club was born. It all started with a man called Tiverton Preedy, who in 1887, at the age of 24, came to Barnsley as a curate at St Peter's Church. Now, it's not the grand building St Peter's that we see today, it's in fact the building that stands alongside it and is now the Parish Hall. The Parish Hall was opened in 1872 as a mission room and it was run by the Reverend John Brereton. Now Brereton had an enormous amount of social problems. He simply couldn't cope with them all on his own. And that's why Preedy was so important to him, to help him cope with this enormous load of pressure that he was under. Preedy also happened to be a very passionate sportsman. So it was only natural when he came to Barnsley that he should want to try and find out what the Barnsley Rugby Club was like. So he went along to make contact. But to his horror, when he got there, he discovered that they played rugby on Good Fridays. He could not play the game on the day that marks the crucifixion of Christ. And on principle, he walked away. As he was walking down the road, he happened to chance upon some youths who were standing outside a pub talking about the formation of a football club. Preedy stopped, his ears pricked up. This was something that really interested him. He joined in the conversation and it quickly became obvious to these youths that here was the man to lead them. And so, on the 6th of September, 1887, Barnsley St Peter's Football Club was born. They chose that name because Preedy wanted to signal the commitment of the church to the community. The first elected officers were himself as financial secretary and John Brereton, who was the president. Preedy had many roles in the club. He wasn't just financial secretary, he was also a player. He recruited players, he arranged fixtures, and he secured match officials. But very importantly, he secured for the club their very first proper ground. From the steps of St Peter's here, he could see some open fields and thought that this is the place to play. He eventually approached the owner of the fields and after a lot of knockbacks, secured a pitch in that area. The ground that they played on was to become the Oakwell Stadium. They played their first match on Saturday, the 17th of September, 1887. It was an away game to Manor House. The Saints, as they were originally called, obviously because of the saint in St. Peter's, 1-4-1. And Preedy played as a forward. Now, when it came to home games, there was a real problem because they had no changing facilities. Quite simply, the church was too small. And so they found the solution right here in the cellar of the Dove Inn. Isn't it ironic? that the boys should change in the cellar of an inn because Preedy was a teetotaler. In fact, more than that, he was an active member of the temperance movement, which did its very best to try to keep people out of public houses and to keep them away from the demon drink. 
Preedy loved the rough and tumble of football as it was played at the time. In fact, it was more like rugby than the football we think of today. However, he expected the highest standards of sportsmanship, not just from the players, but also from the spectators. By 1890, they joined the Sheffield and District League and turned professional. And by 1898, they joined the second division of the Football League. But the significant year is 1893, for two reasons. First, it was when the club won its first trophy, the Barnsley Charity Cup. It was Preedy's parting gift to the club because he actually left that year to go to Islington. Now, it was interesting because when he left, people suddenly thought, ah, this is our chance to start playing football on Good Fridays again, because of course, Preedy wouldn't allow that while he was in charge. But just to show how closely that club was identified with Preedy, it took four years before its name could actually be changed and Good Friday football could be reintroduced. In 1897, Barnsley St. Peter's Football Club became quite simply Barnsley Football Club. When Preedy left for London in 1893, it was in the full knowledge that he was embarking on a ministry that would stretch him to his limits. Islington had even greater poverty and deprivation than the St Peter's district of Barnsley, but his passionate love for the people he served, together with his indomitable faith in God, gave him the strength and inspiration to meet the enormous challenge that confronted him. After four years in his first parish in Islington, he was appointed priest in charge of the All Saints Mission here in White Lion Street. Now the mission stood on this site and it was nothing more than dilapidated cow sheds. His house stood here where we are at this moment and it had no home comforts, no furniture. In fact, he slept on the floor with nothing more than his coat for a blanket. For the men of the district, he set up billiard tables in the crypt of his mission hall and also a boxing and wrestling ring. He himself was a very keen boxer and earned the nickname the Boxing Parson. Here he founded a sports club which was to become famous for the boxers and wrestlers it produced. Preedy explained how he combined religion and sport at the mission. Without giving the slightest offence, you can call ours the Costas Club. These are the men who would a short time ago have ridiculed the thought of darkening the doors of a church, but who are, by degrees, learning self-respect and realising that the Divine Master is their friend and that true religion can be brought into their lives without spoiling their sports and pleasures. He had the window of his study specially converted into a bay so that he could see men entering the two pubs at the end of the street. One was the Three Johns here, which is now called the Hobgoblin, and the other is the White Lion at the other end of the street. Now, the reason for this was quite simply that the wives of the district would tell him if their husbands were going into the pubs to spend the weekly wage on drink instead of food and clothing for the family. When they told him, and he saw them going in, he went up to them and raised his fists. Now, he was only five foot five inches, but the neighbourhood toughs were all scared of him. And the moment he did this, they made a run for it. And that's how the weekly wage was saved. Preedy never forgot Barnsley Football Club, despite his total commitment to the people of Islington. If Barnsley happened to be in London for a match, he would go along to watch. And if friends came down, he'd invite them to his mission where they could enjoy watching boxing in the basement. He would also occasionally go up to Barnsley for important cup matches, and he certainly never failed to send a telegram of encouragement before every cup match. Well, how delighted he must have been when in 1912, Barnsley eventually won the FA Cup. The ball was presented to him at the Clarence Hotel, that's the club's headquarters, at a celebratory banquet after the game. And that ball was proudly displayed 
in his study in Islington until the day he died. He bequeathed it to the club in his will. And here it is, the very ball presented to Preedy. With me is Arthur Bauer, who for many years was the club's official historian and still does work for the club. Arthur, I believe your father and grandfather were at the final in which that ball was won. Um, can you tell me something about their memories? Uh, yes, I can, Peter. Obviously, it was won in 1912, and uh, my father stood with uh, my grandfather behind the goal, where Barnes has scored the winning goal. And uh, I've had a lot of tales, but the one that sticks in the mind mostly is, I think it was about 10 days after the Titanic sank, and the footballers of both Sheffield clubs were going around the ground with collection boxes. And uh, my father always said, every time he puts money in a box when the Salvation Army call anything, that tinkling of boxes reminds him of that day, the day we won the cup at uh, oh. Bramall Inch. Well, that, that's a very unusual memory. Thank you very much, Arthur. Arthur's successor as Barnsley's official club historian is David Wood, who's here with me now. David, Barnsley acquired the nickname Battling Barnsley to get that ball and to bring it home. How did they get that nickname? The nickname does come from the cup runs of 1910 and 1912 when they won by attrition rather than skillful play. Um, in 1910 they reached the final and were very unlucky to concede an equaliser in the last minute and in 1912 they played 12 games to win the trophy, six of which were nil-nil draws. Uh, the, in the month of April, when they won the cup, they also played 12 games, which included league games, which is still a record for a professional football club. After the game, at the celebratory banquet in the Clarence Hotel, the club's headquarters, he set the club another target. He said to them, make sure you get into the first division next year. Was his dream ever fulfilled, David? Well, they came close the next season, and the season after they finished third, which gave them great promise for the years ahead. But unfortunately, the First World War took toll of that, and most of the team fell apart. And in 1919, when play resumed, it was a different Barnsley side out there. But yes, his dream was fulfilled. It took 85 years for Barnsley to reach the Premier League. Although Barnsley was always to be a big part of him, Preedy remained in Islington for the rest of his life, faithfully serving his parishioners. In the final year of his life, he developed severe heart problems, but he worked on regardlessly right up until the day of his death in April 1928 at the age of 65. The Bishop of Stepney conducted his funeral service at the Mission Hall, which was absolutely crowded but thousands lined the streets to say their farewells as the procession made its way to Islington Cemetery. And not a single costermonger stall was opened on the day. The Bishop of Stepney told the congregation, you have had a great man in your midst. You have had a wonderful parish priest and a splendid friend. And then he went on to highlight one of Preedy's outstanding gifts. Father Preedy was a sportsman. He could talk to sportsmen. They and he knew that the real power of Father Preedy was his simple, natural, childlike love of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's little wonder that the name of this great man is still remembered with so much affection at Barnsley Football Club today.